Uh, hello, uh, this is Robin from Team 10 in and I want to talk about where I'll drive before it gets taken apart tomorrow. So, um, for our drivetrain, we ran six, uh, 450 RPM on 3.25 inch wheels. So, a really good ratio, good for speed and pushing power at the same time. And um, we also ran uh, thinner wheels to reduce our robot profile, which helps with like getting through alleyways and just in general maneuverability. And uh, next, as for bracing, we actually ran no underside bracing whatsoever to ensure the best uh, bear cost possible. And, uh, and we have a cross bracing here that basically um, mounts our radio and s as well as our hang, which I'll show you guys later. And apart from this bracing, we also have another bracing on the back. It's a two by and what's interesting about this is we actually have uh, a hydrant kind of hyphens ax axle tucked away in here um to make sure it doesn't bend because most teams which ran this design at worlds have bent their back racing and um of course also just the basic drive stuff um you can see we ran a uh, zip tie bearings as well as screw joint to uh, reduce the robot weight and um also a big shout out to the mcmaster screws uh mcmaster spacers for carrying our drive chain um, Oh, yeah, and uh, an interesting part about this wall rider on the back is because, um, as you can see, most people have their wall riders up here. But when it comes to like the Marshall bars, because they're kind of small and the big wall riders go on top of the Marshall bars, this actually goes like below it. And it's really good for gliding across Marshall bars because it actually touches it. But well, most teams kind of have their Marshall like bar running under the, um, the wall riders, which doesn't help at all. But on the front, we do have this, I guess, extension, as you can see from my drive train, this like elevated L channel that mounts our sleds as well as front wall riders. Our sleds are not like CNC or machine cut, it's all hand cut, so it's kind of, it's kind of scuffed. But it is tangent to the wheel, so we have a really good entry and smooth barrier cross. As for the front wall riders, they actually don't do that much because our intake is really long and it literally does not help whatsoever with the actual like purpose of wall riders. We just have it there and we never took it off. So it's kind of jank. But yeah. So next up, I'll talk about the intake. Um, as for the intake, you might notice that we have a quite low intake compared to most teams. It's actually one of the lowest ones out there. So this can actually enter the goal to de-score balls from other teams and steal their balls. So um, to make this joint move, we did run the, the Lockcom mech, which I ran in the States as well, which is a high strength pillow brain with uh, a golden a brass insert inside, which really helps with uh, structural stability as well as just good feasting. And um, we ran two motors, um, 1200 RPM intake. This is the blue cartridge, 24 to 12 uh, on here. And um, for disclaimer, um, this intake actually got taken apart before I got here. So I actually put together this intake, like like this axle, like two minutes ago. So it's kind of jank. I still couldn't find a, a 12 tooth sprocket, so um, there's nothing on this side, but it's good enough for showcase. And um, on the sides, we have the poly for protecting our chains. Um, pocket aces, good shout out. And also a Jackson area. It's kind of pog if you run your div. But yeah, shout out to these guys too. And um, we also braced. We also had a um, a distance sensor here that tracks the balls in here, so we don't get cut off for like double possession during the auton. And um, and of course we can't forget about the iconic uh, eyelash mech. Um, shout out to um, 1095R on the explanation video I watched literally the night before this. Um, well, the eyelash mech is kind of pog. I think our robot is the, the slayest robot out on the field just because how long these lashes are. Holy. But point is, um, the reason they were this long is obviously because our intake is really low, but they did end up touching the bar. And a cool function that our eyelash mech has is that like, um, when you ram into a goal, this actually goes down. So like, it no longer touches the macho bar. So it has this passive, like, I guess, like a passive feature that helps us avoid G11 just because this goes down before or uh, before like the last 30 seconds but it stays up during auto but yeah so I guess that is it about the intake um, 
a big flaw with our intake is that it's actually really long. It's almost uh, too long that like it becomes a nuisance for us at many occasions. I think there has been so many times where we got stuck because of this intake. One time in one of the matches, which is kind of interesting, when we were out taking, going through the alleyway, this intake somehow went so high up that he got stuck on the match hold bar and our robot was off the ground. And we were stuck until our teammates helped us. And the other time we were also stuck in the alley because this was rammed up against the wall and this was against the bar so that we were really like big and long. We couldn't really escape until like our teammates also had to help us out. But yeah, I guess that wraps up for the intake. It's kind of rushed. But this is technically a trapdoor, but like, oh, it's just there to fill out the space because we have a really big a gap here. Um, but we never had time to tune a really good trapdoor, so this is what we did at Worlds, uh, which ended up like helping with the storage at least. And of course, the polycarb down here as well. It just um, it's really bouncy and flexible, so it doesn't really like cause too many issues with the travel. But it holds the travel along with this, and uh, that just helps us keep our travel in. Uh, next up, I would like to talk about um, the wings. Oh my! Uh, uh, the wings. Um, so we went like horizontal wings, uh, two of them on each side. So what's really cool about these is that their geometry allows us so that it has enough force to push the balls, but not enough force to be like um, like grazed. Like it has enough force to push the balls across the, uh, the alley. But not enough, the, uh, not enough force, so that he actually slows us down during the alley. Like this, only grazes past the wall and bends backwards, and not like pushes us up against the alley walls. So yeah, it's really good like geometry for that purpose exactly. And obviously, we have um, plastic nuts to reduce weight, and uh, also it has really thin profile. As you can see, it's only an L channel. It did not end up bending at worlds, which is a relief. But it's, it fits in really like tight places which is really cool and uh, oh yeah shout out to uh, 10B, uh, 10K, uh, these guys over here um, so on the other side uh, these guys oh ooh, we got we got we got gears and uh, and uh, X Machina uh, shout out to uh, Rusho um, and these guys again yeah so they're pretty cool but uh, yeah so um, as for the back wing it's not really a back wing it's more of a dwinker because we didn't really want to run two back wings because we didn't see the point we only run one back wing so it saves weight as well just like in general better for us and um, how this works is that we actually have a we had a really really vertical piston geometry and that helped us on two things first when you push balls with their back wing the, the wing doesn't go up because it's most of the force is focused on for uh, vertical and the second benefit is that we use this for our a barrier climb, I mean, our like our A tier height. So when we go over the barrier, we kind of have this like state where um, the bar is resting in between those two wheels. So we're propped up against the ground like this. And like, when we're when up the ground like this, we just we just activate this piston and that would be more than enough force to pop up our robot off the ground and give us an A tier height. So obviously we have these two like poly sleds for descoring and uh, it's kind of cool. We got that the 6627 sucker on there. Shout out to these guys. Um, and of course, we have a high strength axle bracing so it doesn't bend, even though it's already kind of bent. But this definitely helped with the, the bending problem. And um, so, yeah, I guess that's it for our, our wings. Um, oh, yeah. Finally, I want to talk about the mount. It's, it's kind of jank, but. We just have this like low rider screw like nut. Uh, ignore this. I don't know why we didn't use uh, use a spacer. I think it's because we want to have like like the spacers do like end up like compressing itself later. But uh, I don't know why we ended up using a brass insert. This. Oh, uh, finally, I would like to talk about the hang mech. So what's really unique about our hang is that we only ran when uh, one tank of worlds. Uh, one uh, one tank for a seat there hang is really uncommon because most teams run two tanks, one for like the wings and the other one uh, only for hang. And so like what really makes this unique is that just because our robot is really light, I think 12 to 13 pounds, as well as just our like a carefully tuned piston geometry that like has a um, basically guaranteed more than enough vertical force to prop our robot up. Um, that just allows us to run like hang only one tank. Um, 
So yeah, this piss and jumps took a lot of tuning, but we ended up getting it working, and it's really good, um, very powerful, and yeah. So um, we also ran the bearing, the double like high sh uh, ball bearing strat, which I talked about in our last robot. But since the angle of this new hand is kind of flat, as you can see, we also ran poly studs in the front to help us get that extra edge over the over the natural bar. I mean, over the hand bar. But yeah, essentially we also ran like a lot more bends in our last hang. Last hang we only had one piston going upwards because we had like two bends on there. But now we have like, I think around 10 bends in total for our hang. Uh, we actually ran four pistons going up uh, worlds and four pistons going down. And um, from our testing, we can actually hang around 65 to 70 PSI. And um, that basically, uh, that's around, um, we also tested that um, we need to like use one piston 20 times for a hang to be like, uh, to fail. So essentially we kind of run our front wings like in total of 10 times. So both sides 10 times before a hang actually like doesn't work. So it's kind of cool. The hang always goes up all the way at Worlds. It has a perfectly tuned cog, which makes it really nice. Oh yeah, I also do like to talk about the towers on the back. Uh, there are these bumpers that keeps us from uh, crossing the Auton, uh, the crossing the, the opponent goal during Auton which is again another reason why we didn't do double sleds because uh, we want to we don't want to like cross the opponent's like goal into Auton and also we want to ensure the best front barrier climb so we didn't run back climb uh, back barrier cross uh, but yeah anyways there's also another bar here that just does more than just bracing the towers it actually also holds a compartment for our, our puncher over here uh, it's kind of in a, a bad state right now um, so yeah, but basically um, there are four screws, one, two, and three, four, um, that has like a, a collar lock in here. I'm not going to see, but there's a screw hole. And uh, there's also one, one, two, three, four holes here. So how it works is that we just screw it on through here. And then it'll work really well as a puncher, it's secure. And um, as for the actual punching itself, um, this high shins bearing is supposed to, uh, high shins uh, axle is supposed to be screwed on here. But it kind of came apart after, but it was our stopper, so let me see if I can... Well, yeah, so essentially this would be here and it will stop our, like, it will stop our puncher. But we actually ended up making this like two days before Worlds, so it never really did much uh, as, as skills. It was kind of bad, but it's still like, it's, it's still like a nice feature, uh, just in case you want to like do judging and stuff. But yeah. So, I guess that's about it for our robot. Um, it's kind of, we kind of rushed this year's design. I think especially the intake caused a lot of issues. And we didn't do much, uh, we didn't do too well at Worlds due to strategy issues. Um, but I think this year's Worlds was really fun. And um, I would definitely uh, try again next year to go to Worlds. And I guess good luck in high stakes. So I do also want to end up talking about controls. Um, I used an arcade, so forward, backward, left and right. And uh, this button opens both of the front wings, and this button opens the the dwinker, the back wing. And then if I press this this thing forward, it presses this one, which actually opens the left front wing. And if I press if I press this one, which presses this, it opens the right front wing. And then on this side, this is intake, like intake, intake. Then intake stop, then intake outtick, then intake stop. So I didn't really have the holding mech, I just have a toggle, so yeah. And uh, this button's for hanging. And when I press this, the hang will just go up and press again, it'll go down. And then A is kind of funny. A is actually a, a button that puts our motor on hold. Uh, the only reason we want our motor on hold is when we're trying to balance hang with our dwinker mech. And it kind of slides off oftentimes, so this button keeps it on hold so that we can go over the bar and then it'll stop at the perfect position. We were gonna make a macro, but we didn't have time, so that's about it. It's the way every day goes, every time we've no control. If the sky is pink and white, if the ground is black and yellow, it's the same.